Yeah, great to have you with us here on DXB today. Thanks so much indeed uh, for tuning in to yet another edition uh, where we are talking all things design in all its extraordinary guises. And to that end, introducing some pretty extraordinary guests. Uh, our next guest known for elevating the design landscape right here in the city through her innovative approach and keen eye for detail, establishing, establishing herself, I should say, as a sought after designer uh, here in the city, here in the country and regionally. Please welcome Tanya Ivin from Interior Takeover to take over the show. I'm taking over. Take it over. <laughs> Thank take, you so much. Get ready to take over. Thank you for having me. No, it's great to have you with us today. Listen, um, quick one, because we've been talking about the the trend setting elements here in Dubai. Yes. The Dubai Villa has become a thing. You know, forget the Hollywood Villa. It's all about the Dubai Villa these days. It definitely is. We've just been talking about the, uh, the, the, the talent of the future. But I mean, what about the, the current talent at the moment? One thing we've seen in the culinary world here right. is chefs from around the world come to Dubai now to try and ply their trade or to Definitely. learn it to, to learn even further. Are we seeing it the same trend with designers as well? I believe we are. I have a lot of design friends and I'm sure Khaled and Sibo do too. You know, designers from Amsterdam, from London, from New York, and they're coming to Dubai saying, oh, I'm here for a couple of months. I'm designing my client's home. Mm. They're based in New York. They're based in London. They've bought a property in Dubai, so I'm flying over to design it. Wow. Which is amazing for me to see, and I'm sure for everyone in Dubai, because they are bringing their input mm. into Dubai. And like the discussion that you were having earlier, it's people from outside now coming here mm. to give their input, where before we were going abroad to get inspiration. Mm. And now they're almost inspired by us. They're asking us, oh, wow, you know, I've seen this in Dubai. I've seen that in Dubai. Yeah. Where can I source that? Mm. You know, and, and like, like Sibo and Khaled do, they're manufacturing here. They're creating here. There's a lot of furniture designers popping up in the region. Mm. And seeing everyone from abroad now coming here as a hub is fascinating to watch because before it was always us going abroad. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. and you know, like, like they are, they're now opening restaurants that are homegrown here in Dubai, yeah. opening them abroad. And I'm doing the same, doing projects in Morocco, doing projects in London, which we didn't think that they'd be hiring us from Dubai to go and do that. Yeah. And how does that like impact the interior designs here? Because real estate is booming now. People are in a surge to buy properties from apartments to villas that are either constructed or yet to be constructed. So how does it impact the architectures and designers here in the UAE and that? Well, I think we're now at a privilege that I moved to Dubai 20 years ago mm. and places like Emirates Hills were freshly launched. You know, the meadows, the springs, the lakes was like a fresh community. Arabian Ranches was like this out there, you know, people were like, oh, there's this new place opening up in Arabian Ranches. And it was it's so miles far, right? away. <laughs> now Arabian Ranches is front and central. And I think what is exciting for us as designers, whereas everything 20 years ago was a new build, you know, they're like, oh, here are hundreds of houses and they all look the same. Those houses now all need renovation. Yeah. So we are now at a time where we're like, oh, this is amazing. We can take it down to the studs, knock everything down, and put our own twist on it. So now you're driving through these communities where before it was more of a cookie cutter look, mm -hmm. and now each one kind of has its own look and feel. You can see the personality of the people who are living there coming out. Yeah. And that is, I think, the majority of projects that we work on today, mm -hmm. where either we're knocking down an older house or we're taking the base of it, the bones of it, and turning it into something new. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Uh, we're starting to do a little bit of residential as well, dabble yeah. in it. But um, I love it. It's it's uh, you know taking that old structure and just totally transforming it into our vision. And it's 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 becoming more and more you know uh, prevalent in, in pushing boundaries. Yeah, in, I'm in interested Dubai. to know why your reaction was like that. Like why is it you know you're tiptoeing into the residential side? Because obviously Tanya's like it, it's it's a it's a whole other animal. It's but you know what? I, I agree with him. I agree with him because I see what they do as like F and B, and I see the projects that they do. And I'm like, oh no, that scares me. That's yeah. fascinating. Why? Why is and that? In residential, it's, it's it's a commitment. It's a two-year commitment. It's a commitment. You're, you're almost you're, a, you're almost a psychiatrist with the with your. With you're your a clients. psychiatrist. You're a marriage counselor. Yeah. You're you're the in between. You know, the husbands and wives and siblings. I want this. I want that. And they're like, what do you think? And you're like, okay, <laughs> let's all calm down. Let's take a minute. 
Um, How much? Yeah, How much? yeah, that, that sounds like my dad. It sounds like too much. Well, let's stick to the residential side for now. Um, talk to us about then the trends, the trends of 2024. What, what should people be looking for right now? I mean, a, a trend that I think is slightly newer, I don't want to say new, but new-ish for Dubai and for this region, is people were always afraid of having wooden floors. You know, this is something, I grew up in the GCC, I grew up in Oman, and people were like, no, no, you cannot have wooden floors. The, the climate doesn't allow for it, the expansion yeah. of the wood. But it's a global trend more and more. Wood is coming back, getting in touch with nature. Feels great if you're walking barefoot. Mm. It's good for the soul. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we see herringbone floors coming back in a strong way in modern spaces, whereas herringbone floors were always kind of this classic, older, you know, heritage kind of mm. That's good, because I've got herringbone going in my house next week. I so love I'm it, you're on trend. trend. I'm on you're trend. You're on trend. I'm on trend. Tom, I'm finally on trend. <laughs> totally on trend. <laughs> look at your outfit, you're on trend. You're like a trendy person. <laughs> okay, so herringbone, so those older looks coming in, what else should we be looking Definitely. for? Definitely. I think it's, um, you know, the whole white look. Everybody in residential, there was the couple of years where everything was white. Mm. I love white. I mean, we're matching great today, but yep. The white sofa, the white walls, the white accessories, this Japanji kind of look and feel. And I think now everyone's like, okay, we're kind of over the stark white. Let's get warmer, let's get cozier, bring in these earthy tones. Mm -hmm. My favorite color at the moment is like that kind of burnt caramel, kind of brown, you know, and almost like the leather is coming back. Mm. So it's a combination of the modern, bringing in the beautiful, you know, marbles or stones like travertine and things like that. Yeah. And really, we're bringing back all nature's elements. Yeah. You know, whether it's wood, stone, leather, I feel like these are all combining now in a modern way. Concur? I, uh, 100%. It's, and almost, maximalism is almost coming back. Yes. And it's about layering fabrics, textures, marbles, wood, and bringing it all together, making it work. And, Definitely. And, and, and like that's, an as a designer, it becomes more difficult because it's easy to design a big white space. Yeah. But layering all that stuff together, is it's challenging. It's challenging, yeah. It's challenging and everyone has their unique look and feel. So mm. as a designer, people come to you and they say, oh, I want you to design it. Mm. But at the end of the day, they are living in it. It's their space, it's their comfort zone. And that's where residential, you really, I end up being very close friends with all of my clients. You know, later on the project's done, we still go out for dinner yeah, and yeah. for coffee because you tune and you tap into their everyday lifestyle. Mm. And I say, okay, you know, that picture you've shown me as an inspiration is stunning, but it's not for your everyday life. Yeah. It's not practical. You know, let's see what works for you. Khaled? Yeah, and, and I'm starting to notice a lot of similarities between mm. commercial design, hospitality, yes. and residential, um, especially after now people work from home more. Uh, people want to host, people want to have spas and gyms, and, yeah. and so, so maybe we'll start working uh, uh, together more than just That's admiring right. your work from That's far. Right. We've known each other, I want to say, before they started their business. I know That's Khaled so and Sibo. So I've seen them evolve over time and it's it's exciting. So what we need then is a residential project, it's probably going to be Emirates Hills, with some kind of <laughs> downstairs. But I, I think COVID played a big role in that. I think that COVID kind of gave that focus back to your home. Mm -hmm. Everybody go home, reflect on your life, reflect on your lifestyle. And I think that's what kind of pushed people to start entertaining more at home, mm -hmm. have home cinemas, have home gyms, have home offices. Mm. And I, I don't hate it. I and at love the it. same time, hotels are starting to look more like yes. homes and more like living rooms. It's, it's, it's the social experience is, is starting to mix between both mm -hmm. more I mean, than like, ever. I've noticed it even with the developers now, you know, developers used to sort of brand a residence with uh, a car brand or something like that. But now you're seeing certain developers bringing in homegrown chefs, etc., to inspire yeah. their kitchens. And, what, and, and we're seeing that sort of the, the, the boundaries that you were mentioning there just widening all the time. Yeah. Take on the challenge. Time. Well, thank you, Tanya, for thank being so with much. us on the show. And now it's off to Katie for DXB in 60. Uh -oh. uh, right, gentlemen, do you know about this? We're going to give you a little quiz. Oh, wow. I love oh, it because they look terrified. <laughs> so the D DXB in 60, 60 seconds, quick fire questions. You've got to answer as many as possible, but they're okay. all about you. All right, so we're going to have 60 seconds on the clock, starting in three, two, one. One. Khaled, if you weren't in the design industry, what would you be doing? Um, acting. Nice. I don't know, I just made that. Sibo, <laughs> <laughs> what was your first job? I was working at Blockbuster Video. 
in California. Did you or did you not just tell us your age? Okay, um, <laughs> from you both actually, what is your motto in life and in work? Because you must have one together. Oh, that's a good one. Um, just enjoy every day like it's the last day. Nice, concur? Nice work, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Um, Cebu, what's a superpower you wish you had? Uh, reading your mind and what the next question is. Ha ha ha. Khaled, your favorite design material to work with? Favorite design material to work with? I would, I would definitely say a patterned old school velvet. Mm. Oh, nice. Mm. Okay, uh, last question very quickly to you both. First of all, Cebu, to you, why Dubai? It's uh, it's an exciting new city, and you get to you know make up um, a brand new life and uh, a brand new existence, and it's and it's almost like uh, you know a starter house, and you develop it into something big and amazing. Well, as an Arab who was educated in the West, I always thought that I'll keep going west. I was finishing my master's degree in Switzerland, and the more I studied hospitality and design, the more it all the compass just led to Dubai. It was, and still is, the mecca of modern hospitality. And to me, it was like a no-brainer. I was like, oh, finally. We typically, as Arabs, we're always proud of history. This was my first moment to find something current that I was extremely proud and excited about. I so. love that. And the city I gives you the opportunity to be, yeah. uh, stand out. Yeah. Yes. Whereas other places are so saturated, you yeah. can really you know, make your mark here. You've certainly done that. Fellas, we can't thank you enough for, uh, well, being creative for us tonight, but also uh, coming in and being our guest co-host. You both, Sibo Khalid, thank, thank you Thank you for having us. Tanya, thank you so much thank indeed you. for taking over as well. <laughs> thank you. The big takeover, right. We're going to say farewell to our guests, but we're going to stick around. Why? Because we've got a rather special live performance coming your way in just a few moments. Uh, so, you know the rule, don't go anywhere, stay there. <laughs>